We're going to talk about systems of inequalities in today's video. First, let's look at the first problem. Y is greater than or equal to 3x minus 1. We start at negative 1, and we have a slope of 3 because that's in slope-intercept form. So that works out really nice. Then we have y is less than or equal to x, and that goes through the origin with slope 1. So it's also pretty easy and in slope-intercept form. So now our objective is to figure out which region of the graph we want to shade. Um, I will go through uh, using two different methods. Uh, whenever it's in slope-intercept form, it's actually pretty simple. We know that the y values have to be greater than 3x minus 1. So since that graph was in red on my graph, that means that my y values have to be greater than the red line. And my y values have to be less than the blue line. So if I'm looking at some sort of line, the y values are greater if I am above the line. And the y values are less if I am below the line. So if I take a look at this, uh, my y values must be greater than the red line and less than the blue line. So notice greater than the red line and less than the blue line that would occur in this region. All other regions miss at least one of the criteria. So for example, even though in this region over here, we would be greater than the red line, we would also be greater than the blue line, which means that it doesn't work. Okay, problem two. Uh, if I have uh, y is less than negative one half x plus one, less than is not an inclusive thing, so my line has to be dotted. So my y-intercept is one, and my slope is negative one half. So it will look something like this. And I have a dotted line which indicates that my graph does not count the line. Then I have x is greater than or equal to negative 1. x being greater than or equal to negative 1 is a vertical line that goes through x equals negative 1. So, I need y to be less than negative one half x plus one. Y being less than negative one half x plus one means that it has to be underneath the red line. So it needs to be underneath the red line. But if x is greater than or equal to one, that means my x values must be greater than or equal to negative one. So that means it would be to the right of the blue line. So I need my graph to be below the red dotted line and to the right of the blue line that would be in this shaded region down here. So that would be my final answer for number two. Problem three has three lines that we have to take into account. X is less than or equal to two. I'll draw that one pretty quickly because um, by the way, uh, this black line got slightly off of the center, but that's the y-axis. So I need x is less than 2. I need x plus y is greater than or equal to 3. I'm probably going to graph this one. Uh, I could easily shift this into y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 3 uh, and graph it using slope intercept but i'm going to choose to graph it using standard form uh, so that means that uh, 3 0 and 0 3 are on the line because i graphed by intercepts so if i cover up x substitute in 0 for x i realize that y equals 3 would be the y intercept and likewise if i cover up y I realize that x equals 3 
is the x-intercept. So 3, 0 and 0, 3 have to be on the graph of the blue line. And so my graph looks like that. That was a terrible drawing. So I'll try that again. And then I have uh, this one, which I will transform into slope intercept form. Y is less than one half X plus two. So if I start at two and then I have a slope of one half, it's going to look something like this. Now I have to figure out where everything goes. So if I am looking at this, I need it to be to the left of my red line. I need it to be below my green dotted line, and I need it to be above my blue line. So to the left of the red, above the blue, and below the green, gives me a very small region of the graph right here. So that ends up being my solution. Problem four, uh, it looks like we have, uh, I could once again transform into slope intercept form, but I'm gonna try and do something a little bit different to show you one other method to figure out how to solve uh, and plot and figure out where the graph goes, uh, where to shade. And so if I take this one and I find the intercepts, if I cover up y, x equals negative 2 as an intercept. And if I cover up, um, if I cover up x, I figure out that y equals 2 is an intercept. So if I do that, then I have a graph that goes as a dotted line through those points. Now, if I take a look at what I'm going to make the blue line, and I solve by intercepts again, I figure out that the y-intercept is negative 4 and the x-intercept is negative 3. This one is also a dotted line. So it looks something like this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something called critical point testing. So critical point testing, what that does is it takes a point in each of the four regions of the graph. So there's a region kind of to the top, a region to the right, a region to the bottom, and a region to the left. I'm going to take a point from each region that is clearly not on any line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute that point into the graph or into the uh, into each of these two equations up here. And I'm going to figure out whether that point meets both criteria. If that point meets both criteria, then I have a winner. Uh, so first, let's talk about region 1. So in region 1, I have the point negative 2, 1. If that point works, then every other point in that region is going to make both, uh, both of these actually work. So I'm going to try 4x plus 3y, and I'm going to see if that is less than or equal to negative 12. Or I'm sorry, less than negative 12. So if I, or if I check this, I get negative 8 plus 3, which is negative 5. That is not less than negative 12. That is a no. Since that is a no, this point does not work. So that means region one will not get shaded. Region two, it looks like we're using the point zero, zero. So if I take a look at 4x 
plus 3y. And we have to decide if that is less than negative 12. Once again, I have 0 is less than negative 12. That is not the case. That's a no. So that means region 2 is not my winner. I could check region or the second line, the second equation, or sorry, the second inequality. But since the first inequality gave me a no in both cases, I don't need to check it. OK, now we will check region 3. Region 3 appears that we have the point negative 3, negative 2 that we're checking. So 4x plus 3y less than negative 12, I have negative 12 minus 6, which is negative 18. And negative 18 is less than negative 12, so that is a yes. Now I'm going to check the other equation. If it works in the other equation, then I have a winner. Negative x plus y is less than, or I'm sorry, greater than 2. If this works, then we have a winner. 3 minus 2 equals 1, which is not greater than 2. So that's a no. So that means region 3 is not my winner. So finally, I'm going to check region 4. If I check region 4, my guess is it's a winner because all three other regions have failed so far. So if I'm looking at this, I'm at negative 4, negative 1. That's the point that I'm going to check. So if I take 4x plus 3y, is that less than negative 12? That clearly is because that's negative 19. And then if I check negative x plus y, that equals 3, which is greater than 2. So every point in region 4 is actually going to work. I get a double yes, and a double yes means my, um, since I only have two inequalities that I'm dealing with, a double yes means that region 4 is the winner, and so I am going to highlight that. That would be my final answer. So that's your first uh, check into critical point testing. Uh, I'm going to pause this and then numbers five and six are going to pop up on the screen and we'll talk about them for a minute before the video is over. If we take a look at problem five and we graph each of these, I converted the blue one into slope intercept form. We see that we have parallel lines and we are supposed to have y be smaller than or less than or equal to the red line and greater than or equal to the blue line, which gives us this green shaded region in the middle of those two parallel lines. If we look at problem six, I graphed each of these three lines. I noticed that the two that are uh, y is all isolated by itself. Y is less than the red line, greater than the green dotted line. So that means we're really down to two regions, just this region one and region two. I checked region two because region two is a little easier to check because it is. Um, it has a zero value, so that's really easy to plug in. And then when I check this, I see that negative one greater than negative six works. So that means since this works, it is the only region that I'm going to get that's a correct answer. And um, I would shade this region right here, and this region would be my final answer.